Welcome to Mythos AI, your source for Cliff's Notes on complex subjects. Join Anna and Phil for yet another engaging conversation. Today we're diving deep into a fascinating research paper. Oh yeah. It's called AI Mediated Democratic Deliberation. Finding Common Ground. Yeah. And it really digs into this idea of using AI to help people yes. have more productive conversations, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to you know, making decisions together democratically. I see. So, you know, in today's world, it feels like it's harder than ever to find common ground right. on almost any issue. Yeah. But what if AI could actually help us bridge those divides? That's a big question. It is. And this paper explores that question by looking at this thing called the Habermas machine. The Habermas machine. Yeah, it's an AI model they developed to facilitate more effective group decision making. Oh, okay. And it tackles some of those limitations we see in traditional ways of having these discussions, like town halls or citizens' assemblies. Yeah, those can be tough. They can be expensive. For sure. And difficult to scale. Uh -huh. And they're often prone to biases. Yeah, where certain voices dominate the conversation and others get drowned out. Exactly. And so the researchers behind this paper, they were looking at whether AI could offer some solutions. Makes sense. Because AI can process information so quickly right. and analyze these huge data sets, yeah. it has the potential to make sure that all perspectives are at least considered fairly. I'm curious to know how they actually built this AI. So this Habermas machine, yeah. it basically acts as like a neutral facilitator okay. in group discussions. Interesting. And it uses these complex algorithms oh. to gather individual opinions, right. synthesize those opinions, and uh, then it generates yeah. statements right. that are meant to represent the collective will of the group. So it's kind of like a yeah. digital mediator. Exactly. It's okay. carefully guiding the conversation. And helping people yeah. find some common ground. Exactly. And because of its ability to process information so quickly, yeah. it can really make sure that everyone's perspective is taken into account. Oh. The researchers actually did some experiments using this AI. Oh, really? Yeah, they had over 5,000 participants. Wow. And the findings were pretty remarkable. I bet. So one of the things they found yeah. was that people consistently preferred the AI-generated group statements. Oh, interesting. Over statements that were written by human mediators. So they actually compared it to human mediators? They did. And the participants, they rated the AI statements as clearer, mm. more informative, mm -hmm. and fairer. That's fascinating. They also found that after engaging with the AI, yeah. the participants' views actually tended to converge towards a more common position. So the AI was helping them find some middle ground. Yeah. And this didn't happen in the discussions that didn't have the AI mediating. So it seems like the AI was playing a key role in bridging those divides. It really does. And it's important to note that yeah. the AI isn't just generating these statements. Right. It's actually facilitating a process mm. that's supposed to lead to genuine understanding and consensus. Gotcha. And another really interesting finding yeah. was that the AI was really good at incorporating minority viewpoints into the group statements. Oh, that's important. Even as support for the majority opinion grew, right. the AI made sure that those dissenting voices were still heard. That's really crucial for a healthy democracy. Exactly. Making sure everyone feels like they have a voice. Absolutely. So where do they see this technology going beyond these experiments? That's a great question. Yeah. So imagine this Habermas machine uh -huh. facilitating discussions in online forums, okay. town hall meetings. Interesting. Or even within government institutions. Wow. It could be used to help bridge divides on all sorts of contentious issues. Yeah, for sure. Like climate change, mm -hmm. health care, right. social justice. <laughs> Absolutely. The possibilities seem pretty vast. It's really fascinating to think about how this technology could yeah. reshape how we have these discussions. Exactly, and how we make decisions. So how does the Habermas machine actually achieve these results? Well, the paper goes into some detail yeah. about a method they call caucus mediation. Caucus mediation. Yeah, and this is where the AI actually interacts privately with each participant okay. to gather their individual perspectives. So it's like having one-on-one -on -one conversation. Before it even tries to generate a group statement. Interesting. And that statement yeah. is supposed to represent a balanced view right. that aligns as closely as possible with everyone's opinions. That makes sense. It's almost like the AI is holding individual conversations yeah. to really understand everyone's stance mm -hmm. before trying to find common ground. 
I see. So it's not just looking at the overall majority. No, it's mm -hmm. really trying to dig deeper into each person's perspective. That's impressive. It is. And it speaks to the potential of AI yeah. to go beyond just simple majority rule right. and actually strive for something that yeah. truly incorporates the will of the entire group. Yeah. That's a powerful idea. It is. So how does it actually create yeah. these balanced statements? Well, the paper describes a two-component model that the Habermas machine uses. Okay, I'm listening. So the first component is called the generative component. Okay. And this component is responsible for proposing these high-quality right. candidate statements. So it takes those initial opinions from everybody. Right. And it tries to craft potential group statements that yeah. reflect them. Exactly. Okay, so then what happens? So then we have the reward model. Okay, the reward model. Yeah, and this is where things get really interesting. So the reward model basically predicts the preferences of each individual participant. Oh, wow. And then it ranks the candidate statements uh -huh. based on how likely each statement is to be endorsed by all the members of the group. So it's kind of like a yeah. sophisticated voting system. That's a good way to think about it. But instead of just tallying votes, right. it's actually analyzing each person's viewpoint yeah, it's looking at the nuances okay. of their opinions. To find the statement that has the best chance of getting everyone on board. Exactly. That's really interesting. It highlights how AI can go beyond just yeah. simple majority rule. And try to find a solution that truly represents the collective will. Precisely. The paper also talks about how they use the Habermas machine uh -huh. in virtual citizens' assemblies. They wanted to see if this would work in a more realistic setting. Okay, so how did that go? So they put together this yeah. virtual citizens assembly with people from all walks of life. So they were trying to get a yeah. good representation of the UK population? Exactly, a demographically representative sample. Okay, yeah. and they wanted to see if those findings from the smaller experiments would hold up right. in this larger, more diverse group. And what did they find? Well, it turns out yeah. that the results were very similar. Oh, wow. The AI-mediated statements yeah. were still preferred, and the participants' views still converged. So the AI was still effective. It was. Yeah. And that suggests that this technology could potentially be scaled right. to real-world situations. Beyond just these yeah. small experimental groups. Exactly. But, of course, with any new technology, of course. there are challenges and ethical considerations. For sure. And we touched on this earlier, yeah. but the issue of bias is a big one. Right. How do we make sure that yeah. the AI itself isn't biased? Exactly. So what steps could be taken to address that? Well, the researchers emphasize the importance of ongoing monitoring and evaluation. So we need to keep an eye on yeah. how these algorithms are performing. Exactly. Regular audits can help us identify yep. and mitigate any biases that might pop up. So, for example, yeah. you could have independent experts right. review the AI's code and data. To make sure everything is on the up and up. And you could also run simulations yes. to see how the AI performs with different groups of people. And if we find biases... You right. can adjust the algorithms accordingly. So it's not just about the technology itself. No, it's also about how it's being used. Right. The paper also stresses the importance of yes. representativeness so, uh -huh. and good faith participation. You mean... Meaning that... For this to really work, right. the people involved need to represent the broader population. Absolutely. And they need to be willing to engage in these discussions constructively. That's crucial. So, for example, yeah. imagine an online forum where people are discussing okay. a proposed new law. Oh, yeah. The AI could help moderate that discussion mm. and make sure that all viewpoints are heard. Right. But it can only be effective if the participants are actually representative of the community. Right. And if they're genuinely interested in finding a solution that works for everyone. Because otherwise you risk yeah. amplifying existing inequalities. Exactly. Or even manipulating the process. For sure. To serve specific agendas. So we need to be really careful about how this technology is used. Absolutely. It needs to be about promoting genuine dialogue right. and consensus building. Not about yeah. furthering existing power dynamics. One thing I found really interesting in the paper oh, yeah. was the comparison they made between okay. the Habermas machine uh -huh. and AlphaFold. Ah, AlphaFold. Which, you know, won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. Right, for predicting protein structures. And they both showcase... Yeah the potential of AI for, sure. for societal benefit. Absolutely, but in very different ways. So AlphaFold advanced scientific understanding right. while the Habermas machine is more focused on oh, okay. improving 
human interaction. Right. And decision making. But they both exemplify how AI yeah. can contribute to the common good. The researchers actually suggested that That's the creators of the Habermas machine mm -hmm. could one day be considered for a Nobel Prize themselves. Wow. I know it sounds bold, but if AI can actually help us have right. more productive and meaningful conversations. That lead to a more yeah. cohesive and functional society. That's a huge contribution. It is. And it raises the question yeah. of how we measure success in this domain. That's a tough one. It is because it's not just about yeah. reaching consensus. It's about the quality of the discussion itself. Exactly. We need to look at mm. whether these AI mediated discussions are more inclusive, more informed, yes. and more respectful of different viewpoints. Precisely, for instance, you could track okay. how often participants from different backgrounds are able to share their perspectives and how well those perspectives are integrated into the final group statement. Exactly. We need to see tangible evidence yeah. that these discussions are actually leading to better outcomes. For society as a whole. Exactly. It's clear that the development of the Habermas machine yeah. is really just the beginning. It is. Now comes the hard work of testing and refining this technology. And making sure that it's applied responsibly. In real world settings. Exactly. This research really highlights yes. this unique opportunity we have okay. to rethink how we approach uh -huh. democratic deliberation. Especially in the digital age. It challenges us to consider how AI can be used, right. not just to automate tasks, yeah. but to actually enhance human connection. Uh -huh and collaboration. That's a powerful idea. It is, and it's a vision of the future yeah. that's worth exploring. This research definitely raises a lot of questions oh, yeah. about the future of democracy huh? and the role that technology might play. It makes us think about yeah. whether AI can actually help us overcome right. some of the challenges that democracies face today. Yeah. But of course, the paper also acknowledges that yeah. There are potential risks here. Right. The authors are very clear yeah. that this technology oh, is God. not a silver bullet. It's not going to solve all our problems. And there are inherent risks in relying on AI. Especially for something as complex as yeah. democratic deliberation. So what are some of those specific concerns? Well, one of the biggest concerns is the potential for misuse. Right. What if this technology falls into the wrong hands? Or if it's used to manipulate public opinion. Exactly. Imagine a political party using the Habermas machine oh, wow. to create statements uh -huh. that appear to represent the will of the people. But are actually designed to advance their own agenda. That's a scary thought. It is, and it highlights why it's so important yeah. to have safeguards in place Absolutely. to ensure that this technology is used responsibly. And ethically. It's a reminder that technology is a tool. Right. And like any tool, yeah. it can be used for good or for bad. The paper also talks about the importance of transparency and accountability. So if we're going to use AI in democratic processes, yeah. citizens need to understand how it works. Absolutely. And they need to be able to hold those who develop and deploy it accountable. These systems can't be black boxes right. operating beyond public scrutiny. Maybe we need to develop some yeah. clear guidelines and regulations. For the use of AI in these processes. Just like we have regulations for other aspects of our political systems. That's a great point. This deep dive into the world of AI yeah. and democratic deliberation has given us a lot to think about. Thanks for listening to Mythos AI. Stay tuned for more concise insights. And remember to hit the like button and subscribe for future episodes.